Hola a todos. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Mooney, and we're back for another riveting, galvanizing episode of Wyoming Zoo. So today we're building for the American Beaver. Now, these little rodents are so, so cute. So I was so beyond excited to get the opportunity to finally build for them. This time probably, because I feel like the last time I built for them, it was so not to you. Like, not gonna even lie. Um, so I wanted to do them justice because these furry little guys are just so, so cute. I love that they're basically like footballs with flippers. <laughs> Is the best way I could describe them. So this build was a little bit different because I actually didn't have too much of a reference going into this. Um, I just knew I didn't want to do what I did last time, which was like literally just like above ground beaver viewing. No like underwater anything, just like very blah, very like not, it was, yeah, it was not good. So I knew I wanted something completely different. Um, and I think, honestly, looking back at this, I might have got a little too far opposite because I feel like I didn't, in the end, Potter, I feel, see, I feel like I honestly didn't add as much above ground viewing as what I could have, but, you know, I'll maybe amend that in the future, I don't know. Like, something to keep in mind is that anything that I do have built in these videos and everything, um, are all subject to I'm constantly looking back at my zoos and thinking, oh, I could do this better, I could do this better, I could do this better. So I am prone to change a lot of things in my zoos before they even see the light of day on the workshop or anything like that. So this is basically, like, uh, like the thing of this video is, like, putting down the basic idea of what it is. And honestly, I'm re I am recording this voiceover at about maybe may, almost a week after I built this. And honestly, I did end up going back um, and changing a little bit in the viewing gallery, which you'll see here momentarily, um, as well as over view, the viewing area, which you will see changes to that made in a future video. Wink, wink, bench, nudge. Um, so in the meantime, I honestly, looking back at this, I don't know what I was thinking, y'all. I'm going in with the rock work all on the outer barriers. Um, very much my uh, approach for my Hokkaido Zoo, which is something I will probably make a video on in the future. Um, but for right now, I'm taking the approach of rocks all over the barriers because rocks are the barriers until I realize that's not necessarily the aesthetic I had necessarily in mind for this zoo in particular. So uh, you'll see later, I go back and change it a little bit and see just like right there. I leave some of that fence open because realistically speaking, uh, most times in American zoos, I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, but in a lot of American zoos, hardly ever will barriers be completely covered. A lot of times, to like cut on costs and everything, you'll usually sometimes see barrier. Or not, not even sometimes, most of the time, you will see like raw barrier. It was maybe like given like a nice trim or whatever, but nine times out of ten, you're usually able to tell that there's a fence or something there. Make sure all your babies are contained. So uh, that's an idea I really wanted to push forward. So you can see I'm giving them indoor area. The basic idea for this whole aquatic area, I guess, is what it's kind of turning into. Because I have a lot of my um, aquatic babies in like this area, whole area of the zoos. Like basically I have most, if not all of them, planned. Um, the basic idea for this half of the zoo, honestly is like metal buildings, they're like boat sheds, you know, just like very that idea of like a public shed you would find on the riverbanks where, you know, you would have like maybe park rangers in the summer, like handing out floaties and you know, stuff like that. I want that to really be the aesthetic for a lot of the buildings for my babies that require water. Because um, I thought that'd be a really nice throughput that and I think it would be a little silly to put a wooden building with creatures where literally the whole shtick of them is that they chew through wood <laughs> and they build through wood. Um, so as you can see here I'm adding some zhuzh underwater because because the, most of the viewing area for them is going to be like underwater. 
I did really want to uh, make it as lush as possible and just like make it not so boring. Um, and as y'all can see here, I have this issue. I don't know what it is. For s big animals, I always tend to build so small. And I don't know what it is. It just always ends up being the case. And vice versa ends up being the case too. I always build so big for such small animals. Like in the past for my beavers, I ended up making a place that was way too big for so many of them um, by accident. I don't know what it is. Like I think in the moment I'm eyeballing everything, being like, oh, this is like the perfect amount of space or whatever. And then I check the actual square footage or everything. And it's about maybe three or four times more than what's necessary. And then like watching them play around and, you know, do beaver stuff. You look back and it's like, oh my God, they look so desolate and lonely. <laughs> I wanted it to be a very lively atmosphere as much as humanly possible. Like thinking about it, you know, I would want to give them as much space as possible, but sometimes it's just not needed. And from what I understand, you give uh, you give them too much space, it does leave room for them to be depressed in the future, which is so unfortunate, and I don't want to do that to my babies. I mean, yes, I do build in creative mode in Sandbox, but still, I want to keep in mind the things for like keeping like basic animal welfare and just some like common sense things like that um in mind it, i think it not only does it like limit me and help me like think outside the box in terms of like oh pardon me um think outside the box in terms of like okay what exactly do my animals need but also it's just a nice way to like limit myself so i don't go off the deep end too much because <laughs> i uh i feel like i can do that a little bit sometimes I see more and more walk, walk work, oh my goodness, rock work, which y'all know I love my aquatic rocks. If y'all don't, haven't picked up on that by now, most all my rock formations, if not all of them, anytime that I do rock work, um, I find, I don't know what it is, the aquatic, uh, aquatic rocks, thank you, um, just like really turn it out for me. They're just that girl. I appreciate them every moment of the day. So to you, Aquatic Rocks, thank you. As you can see, I am making the full underwater viewing gallery. Of course, I'm going back to my Australian DLC pieces. I love how recycled everything looks. And again, I really want to push home this idea that this whole zoo is made not only from an economical standpoint, from like a Wyoming state government, but also that um, there's just a really big push in terms of conservation, in terms of eco-friendliness and everything like that, to use recycled and um, resalvaged materials. Because we see a lot of that going on outside of zoos as well, and I think it's really, really fascinating. As you're seeing, I did put in above ground viewing of sorts. I wanted this like small, I wanted it to feel like a hiking trail, but like safer. Um, as like the feel for like you're going up a hill you're going up the side of a hill next to a like a lake of some sorts um to see beavers so we'll get back to that in a moment i don't know what it is whenever i'm building i get bored and distracted very easily so i always find myself hopping back and forth between different areas of the habitat and the whole area just whenever I'm thinking about it, um, just so like I don't like forget anything. As you see, I did try to fit some shops in here because I don't like how long and flat um, that whole viewing gallery is, really. Um, but because of the terraforming and everything, I really couldn't fit anything else, which is a bummer. So I gotta come up with some other way to decorate on the outside. How exactly I'm gonna do that, I have no idea. I've honestly... There's a few missing elements from this speed build that um, honestly drive me nuts looking back at it now, only because they're still like this. Um, that I really don't know what it is I want to do to add some zhuzh and spice to it. So instead of sitting here and like just like letting it consume my every thought, I decided, you know what? Let me put that on the side. Let me publish what I have, show people my process, talk about it. Maybe some clarification might come through later, hopefully. I, I, I hope, anyway. So we will see. Yeah, all this path, all the rock work around this path and everything, that's all gone. Uh, <laughs> as you'll see for another habitat that follows the same trail, 
Um, I ended up using a lot of that space, but the general feel is the same, as you'll see in future episodes. Um, it, honestly, it does feel kind of weird, and I feel like I'm like lying to you a little bit, honestly, because I'm like, oh, the speed build is exactly what's there now. When in reality, again, I go back and change so much stuff all the time. Because choices that I make in the moment, I may stand by them in the moment. But after like a little bit of shot eye or anything like that, I always end up going back and I'm like, you know what? This this ain't turning it the way I thought it did. Let me change it to make more sense. Um, which I mean, I think it's great because it always means that my builds are in ever constant evolution. I feel like with some speed builds, what you see is what you get, and you know to expect by the very end, you know, like ending cinematic, like tour, and everything like that. But I feel like this time around, I don't know, it might be different on my end. Keep yelling your toes. Um, I do hate that that little piece of glass just did not want to cooperate, so I said, you know what, screw it. I'm just gonna work on what you can fix. AKA underwater viewing area. That roof is not sunken into the wall, but that's fine because we have pillar pieces. They fix everything. These arctic wooden pillars are to die for. Um, and I, I, just to add a little bit of zoop, see, okay, cool. Um, I couldn't remember if I did that in the end or not. <laughs> um, these arctic pieces are wonderful for everything. And again, just like my viewing gallery, I hated just how flat everything was. So we're putting finishing touches. Thank y'all so much for joining me on another episode of Wyoming Zoo. I've been having a lot of fun doing these. Um, and I've been trying my best not to, like, procrastinate on these, but, you know, life gets in the way. I do have a full-time job outside of this that takes up a lot of my time and energy. So, you know, I fit this in where I can, and I'm having so much fun, and I'm really, really happy with the outpouring of support that I've gotten from friends and family, from new viewers. I've been very, very pleased with this. Thank y'all so, so much for joining me. And thank you so much for the likes, subscribes, and everything. Also, note the change in music. I finally just got epidemic sound, and I feel like this music just like represents like me and who I am as a person like so much better than my old stuff. So thank you again, y'all. Bye!